I remember there was a time, Sheikh Haytham probably remembers, I know, Imam Siraj remembers when there was a time we begged for media coverage about Islam. We begged for them to look at us. We begged for them to pay us attention. Yes or no, Imam? We begged for it. Now we have their undivided attention. We have the world's undivided attention. They want to know what you are doing. They want to know what you are saying. They want to know what you're eating. They want to know where you're sleeping. They want to know everything about you and we act as if that's a bad thing. Wallahi, it's a ni'mah from Allah that they want this. Let them look. I've told the government agencies in America, put a camera in my house, I don't care. Tap my phone, I don't care. I want you to see me. This is why I do what I do. I want you to see me. I want you to see what I have. I have a message from the creator of all things delivered to me by the greatest human being to ever walk the face of this earth and carried out through history through the greatest human beings that have ever walked this planet. I have a message for you. So look, listen, please. We have that opportunity now, brothers and sisters, that the world wants to know what you have. Give it to them. Give it to them. Allow them to see it in your life. Stop walking around with your head held down. Stop frowning. Stop being sad. You have Islam. You have something that will make you everything. I finish with this. Every time I have to go on a trip, and I'm gone for many days, my, my three children ask me why I have to go so much. My 10-year-old son asks me, Dad, why, do, why are you not here to put me to bed at night? Why are you not here to take me to school in the morning? My daughter, my smallest, who is the apple of her father's eye, cries, cry, wallah, he cries every time I kiss her goodbye and I'm leaving, it breaks my heart. And I tell them, that I'm doing this. I'm doing this in sincere hopes that I can live up to the standard of the people who followed Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and that maybe, maybe through my efforts to try to emulate his life, I can get to drink that water from his hand at the house one day. That's all I want. That's all I care about. That's why I do it. You think this is easy traveling? Is it easy, Imam? No, it's not easy. This is rough. It's a rough life. Wallahi. And I tell my children every day, even if I don't come back, even if I don't make it back from this trip, if you grow up with Islam in your heart, to me you will have made me the proudest father. I don't care if you end up homeless. I don't care if you end up poor. I don't care if you end up eating out of trash cans. I don't care if you're sleeping on park benches. I don't care what else you become in this life. I don't care. If you die with that Islam deep in your heart, and the last words out of your mouth are, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, I'll be happy. But if you leave this Islam, I've told my 10 year old, you understand, if you leave this Islam, I don't care if you become a rocket scientist, I don't care if you go to Mars, I don't care if you become the president, I don't care if you become a billionaire, I don't care what the world thinks you are. To me, you failed. You failed and you have nothing. Because with your Islam, you have everything, even if you have nothing else. Without Islam, you are and you have nothing. I don't care if the world is at your feet. Jazakallahu khairan barakallahu fikum wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.